that, that once the nitric acid is neutralized, we collect that solution and put it in spray bottles, and that's what I'm going to be using wow. today. So that's that water, that, and it's no longer acidic, but well, slightly acidic, but it's no longer as acidic as it was. Right. And they also neutralize it as they deteriorate in the solution. And we do that with different chemicals. So this patina has three major chemicals on it. You can watch me apply them. It's got um, uh, the ferric nitrate, which is what I just told you. Nitrates bond to the copper in the in the alloy, in the bronze. And then we take a combination of black ferric oxide, which is really just um, laboratory controlled rust. So iron rusts in three different colors, black, yellow, and red. And so they can isolate, you know, which colors you get. This comes as powder. This by itself won't stick to the bronze. So we'll put it on and it'll go on. Uh, if you can see here in this piece I'm doing right now, it's a little hot. If you can see the, the black is suspended and it's got to be suspended in between layers of the nitrate, which do stick to the bronze. So now, once I've applied a coat of ferric nitrate, applied a coat of the black ferric, apply another coat of the ferric nitrate, now all those blacks are locked in because of the nitrate. And then we're going to use this, which is uh, just like if you buy, you know, titanium paint for your house or whatever. This is just um, powdered titanium without any pigment in it. And it's the same way. It's um, it's laboratory induced rust on the metal titanium, so it becomes titanium dioxide, and that's how we're going to get like the caramel colors. So we're going to alternate between black uh, ti or black ferric oxide, titanium, and nitric acid to get the effect that you guys are looking for. Wow. Now, tr normally, and maybe you've talked to Laurel about this, but normally on this piece, so we we offer it in. Two different patinas. One is a traditional bay, which is um, you know black points, black socks, and a dark brown body, or like a a, a chestnut or a um, sorrel, which is a more of a red with cream colored points. So it has usually it has um, three socks, and they're white and cream, and then the uh, the uh, tail and the mane are like a, a, a deep red, and then the body is a combination of just the caramel and the ferric, and it's a more of a red. So we have the bay, the sorrel, but then you guys saw the patina we did on honey bear, uh, which is a combination of the black, the caramel, and the ferric. So or, while I'm doing this, do you guys want points or socks, or do you want me to treat the whole surface? Like the honey bears. You think? You think. I, I, think I, I don't think there's a wrong answer, to be honest with you. I think <laughs> it'll be beautiful. Be expert, so. Really, it's we just add. So we could treat the whole surface, and I think it would be beautiful. I think if we. Um, well, so how do you get <clears throat> like this? So all of these patinas are hot patinas. And uh, then what I do is, after it's cooled down, I put a first coat of lacquer on it. And you guys probably want to go to lunch or do something, because it takes a while after. A, you can stay for the patina process, which takes, you know, about an hour. And then we wait about a half an hour. And then I just sit there with the abrasive tools. And then I just go over all the edges. We call it blinging. We bling the edges back to raw metal, so it'll look like this. And then I've got this uh, uh, acrylic pigment, uh, acrylic paint that's an airbrush pigment that uh, when I put it on top of those areas, I, I bring the temperature back up to about 150, 180 degrees. And I airbrush that on and it, it turns all of those edges gold. And it deepens the color in, in the piece. So. I guess what I what I think might look neat okay. um, is I really like the bears and I like that they have a really uniform patina over the entire surface. But I also like on the um, 
on the sorrel of this piece where we have just given a little extra color to the mane, the tail, and usually this leg. Yeah. And then instead of actually doing socks and making it more illustrative, um, I think it would be great if we just add a little bit more of that color at the end when we bling the edges. So this is a little deeper, richer, okay. amber color, and each the, the socks on each one of the legs is also that. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So people, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Looking good, Jason. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's just watching it transform is so fascinating. Yeah, it's a pretty dramatic effect. It yeah, is. Very dramatic. And you'll end up with a piece of a bear imitating a horse. For the price of There you go. <laughs> and you'll be a little worried if people come into your home and they see that and go, wow, what a great bear. It's going to be a test. See, I'm a test. That. Okay, Jason, tell me, how many years have you been doing patinas? Uh, <laughs> 27 years. <laughs> how did you get started? I grew up in Loveland, and I, you know, I was a, I loved art. I really gravitated to it. Um, and then my, uh, they don't have it anymore, but there used to be an art academy in Loveland. And um, a lot of, you know, there were a lot of artists around, still are, back then, there were a lot of artists around, a lot of boundaries in Baltimore. And I, my mom bought me classes in the academy, and one of my teachers hired me when he got a big project. So I started working with him. It was a Holocaust memorial for uh, Palm Desert. Yeah. And um, we did everything. So we sculpted it, molded it, uh, sculpted the little ones, enlarged them, did everything in house, uh, participated in the foundry work. And so I, I was immersed in it. And then after two big projects with him, he kind of ran out of work. So I got a job with in a foundry. Luckily, in Loveland, there was a guy, uh, who was uh, the, the best patina artist in the country at the time. And I took two classes with him, and that was really helpful. undulate in between caramel and pepper. Uh, when I go back over it to do the bling, I'll have a little bit more control with that. That, that paint looks Not just nice. like fair knife. <laughs> See how it becomes more translucent?
really fine mix there and get airbrush so it has a lot of control and it can be um that's how it gently transitions I'm going to add another layer so it'll be a little darker than you see. Well, I wouldn't say dark, more color saturated than you see now. But that's yeah. that effect. five minutes I'll heat okay. it up and then um, just spray the whole thing with the red iron oxide okay. makes the golds go gold makes all the ambers go a little richer okay. you can see now if you're getting the yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a warm thing yeah.